There is a, a classic Christian book called No Cross, No Crown. And there's also a saying, no pain, no gain. In these phrases, we like to uh, focus on crown and the gain. However, we don't want to pay much attention to cross or pain. Because our human nature seeks glory rather than suffering. In fact, these days, some popular uh, churches never talk about Jesus' suffering and the crucifixion. There is a Christian movie called The Passion of the Christ that was released in 2004. Unlike many other Christian movies, this movie was fully dedicated to, the, to describe the suffering and the death of Jesus Christ. As a result, the film has been criticized for its extreme violence. Indeed, the movie was full of violence. But we must remember that we humans treated our Savior in such a violent way and finally killed him. Why did Jesus, the Son of God, have to suffer and die in such a miserable way? Jesus had to sacrifice himself in order to forgive us. And the forgiveness was the only way to restore the broken relationship between God and the humans. I pray that we may deeply meditate on the profound meaning of Jesus' crucifixion and his forgiveness on the cross through today's passage. Part 1, the Passion. Look at verse 26. As the soldiers led him away, they seized the Simon from Zion, who was on his way in from the country, and put a cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. Jesus stayed up the whole night and had to go through three separate trials before the Sanhedrin, King Herod, and Pontius Pilate. Although Pilate knew that Jesus was innocent, he compromised with the Jews and made a political decision to crucify Jesus. Before Jesus was sentenced to be crucified, he was tortured by Roman soldiers. John chapter 19 verse 1 through 3 states, then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again, saying, Hail, hey, the king of the Jews. And they slapped him in the face. Flogging was a legal preliminary to every Roman execution. The usual instrument was a short whip with several single or braided leather thongs of variable length, in which small iron balls or sharp pieces of sheep bones were tied at intervals. As the Roman soldiers repeatedly struck the victim's back with full force, the iron balls would cause deep contusions, and the leather thongs and the sheep bones would cut into the skin, causing severe pain and blood loss. Therefore, at the moment when Jesus was carrying the cross, he was physically wounded and exhausted. Although Jesus was the Son of God, he had to endure all pains and suffering fully as a human. It was customary for the condemned man to carry his own cross from the flogging post to the site of execution outside the city walls. Since the weight of the entire cross was probably well over 300 pounds, only the crossbar was carried, but the even crossbar weighed about 100 pounds. When the Roman soldiers saw that Jesus was not able to carry the heavy cross, they had to find someone else. When they looked around, they found a strong-looking man. He was a Simon from Sidon. Who was a Simon? Probably Simon was a Jew who visited Jerusalem from Sidon, which is today's Libya, to spend the Passover in Jerusalem. Although Simon was forced to carry Jesus' cross, it became such a great blessing for him to participate in Jesus' mission. He helped Jesus to carry the cross all the way to Golgotha. 
Let's read the verses 27 to 31. There we go. to crucify Jesus, there were still many followers of Jesus witnessing his suffering. Most of them were women, including Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Jebedee's sons. They were mourning and wearing for Jesus. However, Jesus was more concerned about them, as well as Israel, because of the coming judgment. Daughters of Jerusalem, do not be for me, be for yourselves and for your children. What was Jesus talking about? First, Jesus warned them about the destruction of Jerusalem. In Luke chapter 19, when Jesus approached Jerusalem, he wept over it and made a prophecy about the destruction of Jerusalem. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. Jesus' prophecy was fulfilled in 70 AD during the siege of Jerusalem. Second, Jesus also warned about the final judgment. In Revelation chapter 6, when Apostle John watched the Lamb opening the sixth seal, there was a great earthquake, the sun turned black, the whole moon turned blood red, and the stars in the sky fell to earth. The heavens receded, and every mountain and island was removed its place. Then the kings of the earth, the princes, the generals, the rich, the mighty, and everyone else hid in caves and among the rocks of the mountains, they called to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the thrones and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come, and who can be the standing? All humans will face God's judgment. Jesus endured the punishment by humans, but no humans will be able to withstand God's punishment. The punishment on Jesus was only temporary, but the punishment on all sinful humans will be eternal. Therefore, we must weep for our sins with a repentant heart and accept Jesus as our Savior. Part to crucifixion and the forgiveness. Look at verses 32 and 33. There were two other men along with Jesus. Both of them were criminals and were going to be executed with Jesus. When they came to the place called the skull, Jesus was crucified with the two criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. The crucifixion was designed to produce a slow death with maximum pain and suffering. It was one of the most disgraceful and cruel methods of execution that was usually used for slaves, foreigners, and the vilest of criminals. At the site of execution, the hands could be nailed or tied to the crossbar, but the nailing apparently was preferred by the Romans. After both arms were fixed to the crossbar, the crossbar and the victim together were lifted onto the post. Next, the feet were fixed to the cross, either by nails or ropes. The length of survival generally ranged from three or, four, three or four hours to three or four days. But the Roman soldiers could hasten death by breaking the legs below the knees. By the custom, one of the Roman guards would pierce the body with a sword or lens. Contrary to two criminals on the right and the left of Jesus, 
Jesus was innocent. Even the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate, found no guilt in Jesus. Not only based on human laws, but based on God's law, Jesus was sinless. How would you feel if you are treated like a criminal, although you did not commit any crimes? When Jesus was crucified with two criminals, it was a very shameful moment for Jesus. Although Jesus was the sinless Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, he was treated like a horrible criminal. Jesus was crucified not because Jesus was too powerless to escape, but because he chose to be treated like a criminal, to give us salvation. 2 Corinthians 5.21 states, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. While Jesus was going through unendurable suffering and shame, Jesus defended the simple humans before God. Let's read the verse 34a together. Let it go. <laughs> When Jesus, God's one and only Son, was being punished by such sinful and cruel humans, God could exercise His justice and destroy all humankind. However, Jesus defended the humans before God, instead of requesting for God's judgment on humans. 1 John 2 1 states, My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. Although all humans deserve God's eternal judgment, on the cross, Jesus defended us before God as our advocate. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Before we met Jesus, we were spiritually blind and ignorant. We did not know what we were doing to Jesus. We could not recognize our Savior due to our spiritual blindness and ignorance. John chapter 1 verse 10 and 11 states, He was in the world, and though the world was made through Him, the world did not recognize Him. He came to that which was His own, but His own did not receive Him. Jesus was despised and rejected by his own and became a man of sorrows and suffering. However, Jesus did not reject us. He honestly prayed to God for our forgiveness. We were God's enemy due to our sins and were destined for God's eternal judgment. There was no way to restore the peace relationship between God and the humans except through the sacrifice of the Lamb of God. Jesus came to the world to forgive us sinners by giving himself as a sacrificial lamb to reconcile humans to God and permanently restore the broken relationship between God and the humans. It is also important to remember that Jesus forgave our sins at once by shedding his precious blood on the cross. Hebrews 9.22 states, In fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood, and without the shedding, blood, shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. In the Old Testament, the high priest entered the most holy place every year with the blood of animals, which was effective only temporarily. However, the blood of Jesus shed on the cross is effective eternally. Jesus became the perfect and, perfect and ultimate sacrifice once for all. Therefore, Jesus' request for forgiveness on the cross has power to save anyone on earth, anytime. Amen. When we are forgiven by Jesus, we can also have a power to forgive others who have hurt us. The Lord's Prayer we recite every Sunday goes like this. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
We could have been hurt and abused by our family members, our friends, our workers at work and in church. Even though we believers are forgiven by Jesus, it is still not easy to forgive others. There could be many conflicts and misunderstandings among brothers and sisters in the church. They could accuse and hate each other against Jesus' teaching to love one another because of an unforgiving heart. When you cannot forgive someone, let us remember Jesus Christ, who forgave all those who despised, insulted, and rejected him while dying on the cross. There are many great stories about forgiveness. For example, there is a mother who lost her six-year-old son during the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting, which occurred in December 2012, when Adam Manja killed her 20 children. She had to suffer from deep sadness and anger, but later she chose to forgive the killer. She said that forgiveness was the most important aspect of her healing journey. And she added that she has forgiven not only the killer, but also herself. She has found forgiving herself more difficult than forgiving the killer. We can experience the power of Jesus' forgiveness on others as well as ourselves in our daily life. When we fully accept Jesus Christ who forgave all our sins on the cross, we can truly forgive others, including our family members, our friends, and our workers, as well as ourselves. Amen. Let's think about the power of Jesus' forgiveness watching a short video. Can we turn off the right? Surprise him with a dose of human kindness. 
Mr. Ridgeway. Um, there are people here that hate you. I'm not one of them. You, you made it difficult to live up to what I believe, and that is what God says to do, and that's to forgive. You are forgiven, sir. The poem is translated like this. Until the day I die, I long to have no speck of shame when I gaze up toward the heaven. So I have tormented myself even when the wind stirs the leaves. However, despite my human effort to live a shameless life, I realized that I was too powerless to overcome my inner simple desires, such as selfishness, anger, hatred, greed, and lust. According to God's law, I was guilty before God and deserved God's eternal judgment, regardless of my human righteousness. Through faithful one-to-one -one Bible studies during my freshman year in college, I finally admitted that I was a sinner before God and accepted Jesus as my personal Savior. While Jesus was asking God for forgiveness on the cross, what were simple humans doing? Look at verses 34 to 37. Roman soldiers divided up Jesus' clothes by casting lots. The rulers sneered at Jesus, saying, He is saved others. Let him save himself, if he is God's Messiah, the chosen one. The soldiers mocked Jesus. If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Jesus was insulted even by one of the criminals who hung on a cross. And you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. All these people told Jesus to save himself, to prove that he was really the Messiah. It must have been a great temptation to Jesus. In fact, there was a Satan behind all those people who asked Jesus to save himself 
like any other selfish human. In Matthew chapter 4, after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus was tempted by Satan. If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. However, Jesus sternly rejected Satan's temptation. When Jesus was dying on the cross, Satan again tried to tempt Jesus to interrupt God's work of redemption. Although Jesus was physically weak, wounded, and exhausted, Jesus still refused to save himself, but chose to die on the cross. Why? Why did Jesus choose to die instead of saving himself? John 3.16 states, For God so loved the world, that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. It was because Jesus loved us so much that he wanted to willingly give up his life on the cross and give eternal life to whoever believes in him. Let's read the verse 38 together. Let it go. According to John's Gospel, many of the Jews read this sign. For the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. The chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate and asked him not to write the king of the Jews. However, Pilate rejected their request, saying, What I have written, I have written. For, for crucifixion, a sign on which the condemned man's name and the crime were displayed was usually attached to to the top of the cross. The sign that read, the king of the Jews, could sound like a mocking, but ironically it indeed revealed Jesus' true identity. Jesus is the king of the Jews, and the king of the all people on earth. Look okay, at verses 44 to 46. It was about noon time, but the whole land became very dark until 3 in the afternoon because the sun stopped shining. This extraordinary event represented God's deep sadness for the imminent death of His one and only Son, Jesus. God's heart was broken for His Son's suffering and death. However, God had forsaken His Son completely and let Him suffer and die on the cross to save us. The curtain of the temple was also torn in two what does this mean to us? The curtain had separated the most holy place from the rest of the temple. Only the high priest entered the most holy place once a year with the blood of animal sacrifice. The curtain signifies that simple man was separated from holy God. However, the death of Jesus on the cross tore the curtain from top to bottom and it enabled us to approach God with confidence and boldness. Hebrews 9, 12 states, He did not enter by means of the blood of goats and calves, but He entered the most holy place once for all by His own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. Jesus restored the broken relationship between God and the humans through His precious blood shed on the cross and open the, the door to salvation for all who believe in Him. Let's read verse 46 together. Let it go. What were people's responses to Jesus' death? The Roman centurion who witnessed everything from the beginning praised God and said, surely this was a righteous man. Others beat their breast and went away. All those who knew Jesus, including women from Galilee, stood at a distance and witnessed Jesus' death on the cross. We know this would not be the end of the story. Many of those who witnessed Jesus' death 
would also witness the resurrection of Jesus. Jesus suffered and died on the cross. Our faith in Jesus that he died on the cross for our sins will save us from the power of sin and death. Amen. Satan wants to distract Christians from the cross as much as possible and make us focus on something else. However, we must always remember that Jesus who died on the rugged cross forgave and saved us. Therefore, Jesus' crucifixion should be the center of our faith and the life. I pray that all of us here may deeply accept Jesus' true and eternal forgiveness of our sins. Let us depend on His precious blood shed on the cross every day. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your Son who died on the cross, shedding His precious blood. Thank you for your Son who suffered in our place. We deserve your eternal judgment, but because of your, because the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, uh, we are saved. Help us to remember the forgiveness of Jesus on the cross, and help us to have a power to forgive others. Thank you for this time. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we will sing Him Love Us When.